The next entrepreneur into the den is Simon Bourne, who's been on a voyage of self-discovery to get where he is today. I think the toughest times in my life was kind of just sourcing my identity and who I was. I never really felt comfortable in my own skin. Then having a business, that's ultimately what keeps me going and why this become much more than about selling the products. It's a therapy. Anxiety and overthinking are the two things that I suffer with the most. So I'm a bit nervous about being here in front of the Dragon. But I would love to get an investment. I feel like the Dragon could add so much to my business. Peter, oh, wow. I love the ones with the red, the yellow and the brown. They'd go with the stripies, wouldn't yeah. they? Should I just put my money on the desk now? I don't even think it needs to pitch. So let's do it, let's bring it on, let's enjoy it. Cobbler. Hello, dragons. My name is Simon Bourne, and I'm the founder, designer, creator of the Hand-Dyed Shoe Company. I'm here today to ask for a £70,000 investment in return for a 15% equity stake in my business. I am on a mission to change the way the world buys shoes by offering a bespoke purchasing experience and building a brand upon my biggest values, love, friendship, and loyalty. And the Hand Dyed Shoe Company has created an experience which will enable you, the customer, to design your own pair of handmade shoes. We invite our clients by appointment into our unique retail environment where we take the client through a design consultation and we end with some fun, the shoe shine tutorial. Sorry. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm delighted to see I've crafted each of you a pair of shoes. Wow. So wow. <laughs> I can just hand them out. Wow. It's a somewhat nervous pitch from Simon Bourne. Peter, I'm not going to lie, we had to get a special box uh, <laughs> <laughs> for your ships. <laughs> Who's offering 15% of his bespoke leather shoe business. Oh, Ooh, Deborah, <laughs> it's a habit. <laughs> in return for £70,000. How do they feel, Peter? That's amazing. I was like, never are they going to fit. But before he can stand shoulder to shoulder with a dragon in the boardroom, he'll need to get through the interrogation. Trousers could do with being a bit longer, but other than that, the shoes are fine. Oh, my goodness. I think they're beautiful. Starting with an investor from Simon's neck of the woods, crafting queen Sarah Davies. Fantastic pitch, Simon. You look like you've got a great, really exciting, crafty business. Thank you very much. Something I can understand. So tell me a little bit more. So you, you have a store. So we, uh, we have a, our own location uh, about two miles uh, outside of Durham City. We've done that on purpose. I don't want to be on a high street. I want it in the old churches, in the barns, in farmhouses. I want it to be a destination place where if you come in, uh, to have an experience, you are coming to have the, the design you so want. where exactly are you? Uh, in an old seminary called Usher College. In Usher College. Do you know it? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody uh, knows it. <laughs> yeah, no, Usher College or Ushy College. Usher we College, would say yeah. around, around Usher. North. Um, so if I'd gone through this process with you, would I just meet you the once? For the just the once, yeah, just the once. And how much would I be looking at for this? Yeah, so the shoes range from 350 to 450 on average. And what has your turnover been so far? So in 2018, we turned over £178,000. 2019, we're 20% up on last year at this stage. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed, especially doing that with the people of the North East Grid. <laughs> That's You've part of the reason I'm here as well, is, is I realise this, that there is a much bigger world than the North East. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a huge amount of customers who travel to see me, but 76% of our 2018 orders were digital. So that would still involve a personal service, so phone calls, or emails, and that's something I'm very passionate about. And you give that personal service at the moment. And I give that personal moment. service at the moment. So how's that going to work as you scale up? Are you concerned about that? Are you wanting to create mini you? Yeah. So I'd say concerned is not quite the right word. I'd say I'm excited by that. I can train people to look after those clients in the same ways and the same values that I would do it. And, and I believe this, all brands can scale. Uh, if, if it was impossible to build a brand beyond the founder, then the likes of Victoria Beckham's brand wouldn't exist. Simon's given himself some posh shoes to fill by aligning his bespoke business with a fashion powerhouse. 
Next to review his product is Tej Lalvani. Simon, um, I, I like the shoes. They're great. You know, I'd buy a pair. They are a bit slippery, though. That would be the wax on the bottom. They are hand-mated, so uh, sometimes you get a little bit of excess wax. Maybe they're good for moonwalking. In fact, maybe I should try moonwalking with them. Give it a go. Go on. <laughs> oh, you can do it, can't you? Ooh. Yeah. Let's see. Whoa. Oh! Oh! Is there anything this man can't do? Hold on. <laughs> well, look, I mean... <sighs> Can you, can you take me through a process about the bespoking of, of the shoe? Because yeah. I'm still not quite clear as to what elements you can bespoke and what you can't. Most, most people go on to online and then make contact. 76% of 2018 orders were digital. So then we would ask them to send us some dimensions. Then it's a case of which model do you prefer? So you might say, I like this model of shoe with green and red laces. So fine, is it green all over? Do you want some shading on it? Do you want your initials? So you've mentioned about 76% online. Mm -hmm. Out of those 76%, have they all met you or no. not? No. No. They've all spoken to me. Yeah. So they're not getting the experience. So three quarters of every pair actually hasn't got the love, the friendship, the loyalty and the meet and greet. I would disagree because I do feel like we have the friendship and the loyalty and the love with them because there's, a chap, there's a chap down in Kent who I've never met in my life yet I feel like I know his family. I know he knows my family. Yeah, but that sounds like an email pen pal to me. Peter Jones takes the shine off the entrepreneur's business by questioning the value of the personal service offered. But does fashion retailer Tuka Suleiman see Simon's company as a comfortable fit within his empire? Where do you manufacture your shoes? We have a workshop set up over in Portugal. So we subcontract into the workshop to create the designs. When you walked in here, I saw that, I thought, great very credible. The moment you turned around and said, I designed them and make them in Portugal, I went, whoosh. If you're going for this bespoke, you are selling an old cobbler's dream. And let's be honest, you cannot beat English craftsmanship. Why couldn't you find a small little unit in the UK where you could call it made in the UK, yeah. which would go down a dream in the US? You play on that. So I did go to Portugal because ultimately I couldn't find anybody in the UK to make one pair at a time. What would be the capital investment to create your own little workshop? I don't, I don't know the exact answer to question. Well, you should question. know because you've come in here looking very knowledgeable and, and at the end of the day, if you don't know how your product's put together, it just makes me want to think, hmm, is this a little market employ? I know it all, but not really. Or can you sit down and make a shoe yourself? I could get so far through it, okay. um, but I haven't professed to okay. be a shoemaker. So, so you are a marketeer? I would, I would, I would argue that okay. that's true. So, so that is my biggest question mark. You have not convinced me of what I had in mind when I first saw this. I'm disappointed. Retail giant Tuka Suleiman is dismayed that Simon isn't making his shoes from the ground up. And this point has also struck a nerve with Deborah Meaden. You're kind of the opposite of the thing that I love in a business, which is absolute authenticity. You're building your story up without actually allowing the product to back your story up. You know, you're basically getting shoes made in Portugal, buffing it up and selling it. I feel disappointed because that's not what I was wanting or expecting from you. You know, you stand in front of me, you look authentic, you tell me the authentic story. This looks lovely, the box looks lovely, the shoes look lovely. And then I realised that actually, the shoes that are being made in Portugal. So I'm really sorry, Simon, I won't be investing. I'm out. Deborah Meaden becomes the first dragon to walk as she declines the chance to invest. Has Tuka Suleiman had a change of heart over Simon's production model? I think you've got something within yourself. And if you'd come in here with your own workshop where every shoe is your baby, yeah. where you see it manufactured, I would have cut your arm off. Thank you. To invest in you. But unfortunately, you didn't today. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. And Simon, I'm going to follow quickly on. And it is sadly because I think 
when you first came in, the, the visual impact, the pitch, the presentation, I think it's fantastic until that authenticity of that story just doesn't ring true. I'm sorry, but I'm sadly going to say I'm out. I, I disagree with, with some of the dragons. The fact that you make it from Portugal doesn't really bother me because there's certain elements that you can do well and there's certain elements that someone else can do well. And if you need to scale, you need to have that element uh, where, where someone could manufacture it for you. And going manufacturing yourself is a whole different ball game. It requires a lot more staffing and expertise. Um, so what I struggle with a little bit is, is, is the bespoke ability, how you could scale that, because the time that you're taking with each customer to be able to do that can take some time, and to figure out how you can optimise that will be difficult. So unfortunately, I won't be on that journey with you. Good luck, but I'm out. It's a kick in the teeth for the entrepreneur as Tej Lalvani makes it four dragons to opt out of an investment, leaving just Sarah Davies in the running. Will her earlier synergy with this craft company turn into an offer? There's nothing I would want to do more than invest in a business in my backyard. Yeah. I mean, you are everything that I would be looking for in a business. What I'm really hung up on is what your clients are buying is you. I, I would agree. Yeah. And so if I sit here making decisions with my head and not my heart, is an investment decision. Does my money in this business enable you to go on and reach new heights for then me to be able to make a return as an investor? And that's what I'm struggling to, to kind of weigh up and marry up. So, unfortunately, it's, it's going to be the most nasty couple of words from me. Um, and I'm out. Thank you very much. Thanks, Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All the best. It's the end of the road for Simon. His shoes may have proved to hit with the dragons. I like these. I think I'm going to keep them on for the rest of the show. They They're well. actually very nice. Do you know what? They're much better than the ones you're wearing. Oh, really? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the business opportunity had them turn on their heels. I think the dragons were very fair in the feedback, but I'm a bit disappointed with the authenticity comments. I think that's something I really pride myself on, is trying to be authentic. Maybe there is some flaws in the backdrop of the business in terms of that, but it's something that I can address and hopefully, you know, I can put right.